Hello YouTube, welcome back to a new video. In today's video, it's another tutorial of how to do an architectural render. If you are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and turn the notification on so you don't miss out on any of my videos. And please check out the Architectural Insider. It's a channel of one of my friends from uni. And if you like my videos, then I would definitely recommend the channel. You would absolutely love it. So please go and give it some love. So this one was a project that I did for university. It was a weekend lake retreat or a cabin that was off grid and very sustainable. It was a customizable prefab cabin. So using wood that were from the surrounding environment. So it was easily sourced. The top portion of the cabin was the main bedroom and bathroom and then you walk into a double heighted space into the living spaces which were a basement and it has a view to the lake. So I did post this uh, exact same render on my previous Q&A video but I just thought it'll be better to also talk you guys through it so you can it might be easier for you guys to follow through and also I just wanted to tell you the backstory or just some ideas that were behind this cabin design. For the render, the first thing that I did was take a picture of my site. It was a real site that we visited and I wanted to do a render specifically on the approach because it's something very interesting and you can see the, the top part and the basement and also the hyperbolic roof. So the first thing that I did was take off any background images from the SketchUp model image and then I, I took this image of a forest walkway, something very bright and I added a clipping mask to it and then using a grass brush with the black color to mix in the colors and mix in the background with that clipping mask to make it look really blended. I also just cleaned up some of the edges around the house a little bit. Then I used the clone stamp tool just to make sure that everything was blended as well. You can also use the clone stamp tool and then change your brush into the grass brush so that you can pick up the colors from the exact image that you're using and blend it in with the background. You can also mix in different sizes of grass like large grass or smaller grass just to make it a bit more natural and I have a video specifically on rendering grass if you haven't seen it I'll have it linked in the cards. I've also used the same grass brush or even just any soft brush and just reduce the opacity of where the trail ends just to give it a bit of atmosphere and then I played around with the hues and saturation because I didn't feel like the image really matched with my render or my background because it was too bright and there was too much orange in it so i just played around with the hues and saturation lowered the saturation turned it into a bit more greenish bluish more cooler tone and i've also then added some fallen leaves because just the background and the colors i was using i was going for more like an autumnal render so i wanted to give it a bit more dimension and just add a few leaves on the background and also on the the approach that i've just added to make it even more more coherent. I'm such an idiot when I was doing my SketchUp model for some reason I forgot that half of my building was on the top and then half was uh, on the basement which is kind of my whole concept and um, I forgot about it. I'm like hello. So I just had to cut it with a um, a polygonal lasso tool so something very easy and so I just pulled down that part that was part of the basement and then just aligned it with the edge of the top part and then cut off any excess. The next thing that I did was I used this dark wood panel and the concept was inspired by rocks so I wanted the interior to be very very light so that if it reflects more light and thus energy efficient however the dark timber cladding on the outside first of all makes it fit with the surrounding better second of all it absorbs more heat so it also keeps the house warm in the winter which also is very good and very sustainable because then you are reducing your energy cost so all I did was I took this image of wood panel and then uh, using the transform tool lined it with the edges of the house. So the next thing is that I use these steel panels to put on my roof. And the next thing is because of the height of the cliff, it wasn't high enough for the whole floor. So a part of the floor was sticking out, which I thought created such a nice frame around the building. So what I decided to do is use light brick cladding so that it kind of looks harmonious. So I used that to create a frame around my building my house so again i just used the polygonal lasso tool and i aligned it with the edges and then i just used the heights from my sketchup model to figure out what height i have set it to and then from there use the exact same height on the other side 
you need to make sure that the lines are very clean because it just makes your overall render much more cleaner, neater and professional. So the next thing that I'm doing is the steps leading to the front entrance. I just did it with a polygonal lasso tool and then filled it with light gray and then darker gray. Uh, something very simple and easy. If you add too much textures, it kind of takes away from the image. It just makes it easier for you and as well a bit more balanced. And then again, I'm doing the walls from the inside, just dark and black of the shadow. And I didn't even really bother doing the, cl the wooden panels from the inside because it was going to be very dark anyway. And you couldn't tell that it was in the wrong direction, to be honest. Oh, and one thing I forgot about the approach is that I've created slits on the approach so that it just makes it a bit more interesting when you walk in or create a pattern so that when you're walking inside to the house you have this play of shadow before you enter okay so the next thing is i've added grass texture so the last part of lake cabin the studio was at the farthest end of the house and it was kind of the most secluded that part of the house is has a green roof and that green roof extends over to the hill and it just creates this play of boundaries so you don't know where the green roof starts or ends so i've also just used the polygonal lasso tool just to create something just to create the boundary of my grass and i've also added a clipping mask to it so i can blend the edges a bit further and then i use the same steel textures on the walls of the studio because the walls are slanted so you need a good cladding for that so my option was steel. So then the next thing that I did was just use the grass brush and using the black, just erase off some of the edges to make it a bit more blended. And again, I just went around the edges of the grass with a very, very small brush, went around with the white brush so that the grass has a bit more depth and realism. And again, I also play with the hues and saturation to try and match the colors of that grass into the colors of the background. The next thing that I did was I just used this image of a window. This was quick and easy and used the transform tool to transform the image into my perspective. And then also you can use the polygonal lasso tool to add some light blue reflections on the window. And then I added some more windows on the other side of the house. And then I've also aligned it with the perspective and deleted off any excess. I did kind of take off some of the frames, but oh well, let's pretend they have no frames in their house. The next thing that I did was add a shadow to that wall and also a drop shadow from the cabin. Just a very big soft brush and then you use the eraser and you can erase off the edges to make it again more blended the next or the last thing that i did was so i used a new layer and using a very soft but very light added it towards the right side and as you can see it just lightens up the image oh the last thing this is the last thing i used this image of this guy walking through the approach because like i said it's the render of the approach that's the writer walking down and I had to flip him so that he faces the approach and he faces the entrance and I've added his drop shadow and duplicate the layer and then using the transform tool just align the feet with its feet and you turn that layer using hues and saturation into complete black and then you lower its opacity and then you pasteurize the image of that guy and using a very soft tool you add some shadow to its left side and some brightness and just some highlights to make him a bit more interesting and he fits into the environment a little bit better and i guess that's the end of this render give it a like if you enjoyed it and if you want to see my plans or sections and the whole design process for this specific project i would love to show you my plans and sections because um <laughs> this is kind of funny but my teacher said that this is a gem <laughs> so i think i really nailed this project so leave me in the comments down below if you want to see the whole full project of plan section elevations and concept and the process behind it a little bit 
better than what I explained in this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm Rasha Shururu and I'll see you next time.